Jets second year safety Calvin Pryor, who played for Rex Ryan last season, wasn't a very big fan of Rex doing his Tuesday press conference in a Clemson helmet, tweeting the following. The guy does anything for attention. When asked what he thought of the tweet, Rex had this to say. He's right. Because <laughs> what else am I going to do? Just stand up here or whatever? Yep. I got attention, but I got it in the right spot. You know, he's mad because Clemson put it on Louisville again this year. Mm, Stephen A., what does this say about Rex? Well, what he says, it says. He loves attention, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's not ideal for a head coach. There's no question about that. Uh, but if it works for him, it works for him. You know, I had, in fairness to Rex Ryan, uh, let's not be hypocritical here. None of us had a problem with Rex Ryan's personality when Rex Ryan was a member of the New York Jets his first two years when he guided them to back-to-back -back AFC championship games uh, by guaranteeing that he would do at least that once he arrived as coach. The problem is four years followed. An eight and eight season, a six and 10 season, an eight and eight season, and then the abysmal four and 12 season where Rex Ryan admitted to us to our face that he deserved to be fired. Uh, so when you look at it from that perspective, and then you look at some of the troubles that they've had this year, they're on the outside looking in right now. They're behind the Jets and the New England Patriots in the division. Um, you know, you got Cincinnati and Indianapolis and Denver that are going to win their divisions. Um, and then you've got the Oakland Raiders that are going to be relevant in the playoff picture, the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. So, you know, Buffalo's on the outside looking in. He walked in there guaranteeing some things again. I think the problem with Rex Ryan is that Rex Ryan is coming across as an individual that uses headlines to disguise his ineptitude. And that's what this comes down to. Um, again, when he's winning, you can never say that about him. I definitely think he's a brilliant defensive mind. But their defense right now ranks 16th overall. They rank 24th against the pass. Uh, that's not numbers that we've come to know as being associated with Rex Ryan. And so, you know, you understand it. You understand it's a part of his personality. You want to encourage people to be themselves, Skip. But at the same time, somewhere along the way, you've got to get the job done. And when you look at Rex Ryan, he's created a buzz and interest in the Buffalo Bills. They clearly made the right choice with picking Tyrod Taylor as their quarterback. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but this defense should be better than what they have been. And one would argue their record should be better than what it is. And one would also argue that this team, your pick to be a wild card team in these playoffs this season, is on the outside looking in, and that's all problematic. So if you're going to bring attention to yourself, there's nothing wrong with that, Rex Ryan. But you need to bring the results first. Otherwise, all you are is a sideshow. And yep. I'm not calling him that because I respect him. But I'm just letting him know how the world is looking at him because of his results or lack thereof. Yep. I did pick Rex's team to win a wild card this year, and I do love me some Rex in general. But I gotta tell you, I did not love him wearing that Clemson helmet. I hear what you're saying. Are you trying to disguise your ineptitude? Are you trying to distract attention off the poor coaching job you're doing? Is that what's happening here? I, I also think, and remember I asked Rex to his face about this when we were at Bill's camp, are, are you sometimes guilty of making it more about you than about your team? Is it productive showmanship on your part to create buzz around the Buffalo area? Or is it just flat out egomania on your part? Have you gone over the edge into Rex Ryan's superstar coach, even though you don't have the credentials to back it up? You're, you're certainly one of the most recognizable coaches in the National Football League. You're, you're certainly one of the most talked about coaches. Why is that? Because you'll, you'll wear a Clemson helmet to a press conference. So was wearing that Clemson helmet about Rex or was it about his son, Seth, who's a redshirt sophomore, a walk-on who made the team and has actually caught two balls this year for 14 yards. He stands six feet tall and weighs 175 pounds, does Seth Ryan. Was wearing the Clemson helmet a tribute to his son who made the team as a walk-on or was it about Rex? To me, it was more about Rex, getting a laugh. You know, getting, he, he knows he's gonna get a, uh, maybe a, a lead item on SportsCenter, I don't know. You know, he's gonna get a lot of attention off wearing that helmet and keeping it on, instead of just paying tribute 
to Clemson's achievement so far this year. Just bringing up the fact I'm proud of my kid. He walked on, he made a team that right now is the best team in America, and I'm proud of him. You, you could just throw that in there at the end of the press conference. Everybody would say, thank you very much, great. That would work. Th this doesn't work for me. This is more about Rex and, and about a week in which he knows he's going to get a lot of attention because he's returning to the Jets. Is he trying to take some pressure off his team versus the Jets? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just think in the end it's what I asked Rex to his face about. Is it more about you than about your players? And I think at some points in that locker room, they're saying, what about us? Are we stars or are we not stars? Is it all about our star head coach, the showman that is Rex Ryan? That's, that's how I take that one. So I didn't like this one, Stephen A. I just thought it was well, I, I, crossing the line. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think it was crossing the line, but I didn't like it. I, because I think it's unnecessary. And, and more importantly than unnecessary, I think it's not the priority. You see, I think the priority should be having your team ready to rumble. I think the pri you know, if Rex wants to bring attention to himself, Rex could bring attention to himself by rolling up at a press conference and announcing we're going to come at it by guaranteeing a win, by telling you we don't give a damn who this team is, we're going to go for it. He can bring attention to himself that way. You know, there are ways to do it in a fashion that, although it might be unadvisable in some people's eyes, you can understand it because if you're a rough rider, that's how you want people to know you're coming at yep. your business. It's just that simple. And so there's no harm in that. And I can also understand and appreciate it because what he wants is he wants the world watching his team and he wants the world watching him. It interests him. It ignites him it sparks him supposedly yep. the problem is is that you have four years in which all of that bluster amounted to absolutely nothing yep. four consecutive years as the head coach that you were out you, you were out of the playoffs looking in and by the way speaking about that Maybe we need to think about something here, whether it's nepotism, favoritism, or whatever the case may be. Because how do you have, in the last four years of your career, uh, of your coaching career in New York, you've got two eight and eight seasons, sandwiching one six and ten season, and then ending your tenure on a four and twelve record. And within two weeks, before you have a chance virtually to pass gas, you literally land a, a, a five million dollar a year contract. I mean, him and Andy Reid, who I love. You know how I feel about Andy Reid. Yeah. But I just find it amazing that, that, that guys, so many of these guys, the Pep Hamiltons and others of the world can't even get a chance. Yeah. But you got guys who were losing, who were on the outside looking in, who were regressing in terms of their level of productivity as a coach, and they literally leave a job. And before they have an opportunity to pick up the phone and call their family to inform them that they're unemployed, they already got another job and yeah. it's giving them five million a year. No, I, I find get it. that very interesting. I, I do too. Now, again, back to Pep Hamilton, he got scapegoated. That, that was as unfair yeah. a firing as I've ever seen, and it really set him back in his, uh, you know, his path up to become a head coach. God bless yeah. him. But back to Rex. Look, the Bills. Okay, you're, you're hiring, we all acknowledge, one of the best defensive minds, if not the best defensive mind yeah. in pro football. So you got that going yeah. for you, and you like the showmanship, you like the buzz he creates in an area that has had no buzz of late. And then you, you like the mind games he plays with opponents because now he's playing one with the Jets. He's saying, you know what, I don't even care about the Jets game. I have circled only the Patriots game at Foxborough down the road. You know, that's that's the only one I care about. Well, is that going to work, a little gamesmanship? I don't know, but that's that's what people like Rex for. I agree. I also There's feel no doubt about it. Yeah. If, if the coaching thing doesn't work out, he certainly has a future in PR. I mean, he can, he can manipulate well, the media better than anybody and stay relevant, and maybe that's helped him a little well, bit, to your point. I know well, the coaching you know, pedigree and, and I, what I a think, great I, defensive I mind staying out, relevant. Molly. I think that's worn out. I think that years ago it was far more effective when he was winning football games. Now it doesn't work on us because we're able to turn around and look at your team and say, wait a minute, it ain't what you said it was going to be. It wasn't that way for the last four years when you were with the New York Jets. You came to Buffalo, you talked about the talent that you have and how confident you were. And not only that, you don't have the problem you had in New York with Geno Smith or Mark Sanchez before him as your quarterback. Now Tyrod Taylor actually looks impressive. You look at his numbers. I mean, Skip the Deuce completing about 70% of his passes. Love him. The turnovers, I, told you, I, I yeah. mean, he, he's getting the job done. Yeah. So, really, 
If that's the case, then what's your problem, Rex Ryan? Because your offense isn't too shabby. Your defense is the problem, and that is supposed to be where your level of expertise lies. It's the very reason you got a head coaching job. But the defense right now is suspect. So I think it's worn thin with a lot of us. We look at Rex Ryan. I mean, what's not? But you got to respect the man. We're talking man. about him. We're talking about him more than Belichick, Marvin Lewis, Ron Rivera, the undefeated coaches. So he is winning in that sense. Well, you can say he's winning, or is he embarrassing himself, Molly, because he's True. got us talking about him, because he's bringing attention to himself for all the wrong reasons. Which we, is, is that your definition of winning? It ain't mine. No, I mean in terms of manipulating the media and the, and the PR aspect, but I know what you mean. From the football perspective, yes, more uh, clearly more impressive. Yeah. It's all about winning. Yeah. So in the end, the question is, if Rex fails in Buffalo, will he wind up in the media business? Will he be sitting at, at, on <laughs> the course. first big desk at some point? I don't know. I, 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 listen, I think so. I'd hire him. I'd hire him for a television job. But the point is, is that unlike other folks who may have elected to be in this business, in a in a roundabout way, he's forced to yeah. if that happens because it would be entirely premature. This is only his second head coaching job. I look at a guy like Brian Billick, Skip Bayless, I don't understand for the life of me. He coached nine years. He's a Super Bowl champion. And somehow, some way, he hasn't gotten a head coaching job. But but you got the Rex Ryans and Andy Reeds of the world, who are, who I respect, yeah. by the way, but they never won a Super mm -hmm. Bowl. And, and his job offers come. I mean, it's it's about who you know. I mean, that, that, that clearly appears to be the case. And I'm not saying I don't know Brian Billick from a can of beans. I'm just saying that I see him and I see the words Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. But somehow, some way, he's an analyst in television and Rex Ryan is coaching and bringing attention to himself doing press conferences. I have something wrong with that picture. Yep. I want winners. I think I want, maybe, you can talk all I think you maybe want, Brian but I Billick, want winners. Yeah, Brian Billick might have just decided... This is a lot easier to analyze games than to sure. actually have to coach games. Right? Let's hey, 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 John Gruden, John Gruden's yeah. the same way. Yeah. Why should John Gruden leave Monday Night Football? Yeah. He's probably getting paid just as much money for doing less I work agree. because mm -hmm. it ain't the same as coaching the team. Nope. But guess what? He gets to make that choice because he's a Super Bowl champion. Yep. Rex Ryan ain't even been in the Super Bowl yet. It's a problem with that. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And we will leave it there because guess what's coming up next? Rapper Jeezy is in the house and I love it. So much to get into with him. NFL, NBA, social issues. His new album drops Friday. We'll talk to him in just a bit. Good morning. Morning, morning.